may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenants that they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was formless and void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart, and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. When we look at the books in the Bible, and especially the books in the New Testament, it's important for us to remember that each book was written to a specific group of people at a specific time in history. The underlying truth of God's Word never changes, but the context in which it was written helps us to understand what the writer was trying to get across in particular. Each of the four Gospels begins in their own unique way. Matthew, writing to promote primarily Jewish converts to this new religion, and he wanted to establish Jesus' authority within the story of salvation, so he starts with a lengthy genealogy of Jesus, tracing his Jewish lineage all the way back to Abraham. Luke, Luke is writing to primarily Greek-speaking Gentiles, so he appeals to their sense of rhetoric and logic. And he begins with an introduction that reads like part memoir, part textbook. John starts with very poetic language as he talks about Jesus as being in the cosmos from before time and through to the end time. Mark is also unique. He is probably writing to Christians living in Rome towards the end of the reign of the Emperor Nero. They're being persecuted. There's no time for long, in-depth narratives. Mark moves at such a breakneck pace that there's little time for theology and certainly no time for poetry. Instead, Mark jumps right into the fray and opens on the bank of the River Jordan, just as Jesus is baptized. Today is the first Sunday after the Epiphany, and we are beginning our year-long reading of the Gospel of Mark, and although the lectionary begins in the fourth verse of the first chapter, it bears pointing out that the first three vo- verses of the chapter lend important clues about just what kind of gospel Mark is writing and how best readers, ancient and modern, should understand it. In the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Well, for starters, it's no accident that Mark's gospel doesn't make it past the first two sentences without quoting the Hebrew Bible, and in particular, Isaiah. Mark, not unlike Jesus himself, knew the Jewish scriptures and quoted them often. And Mark will not talk about Jesus' life and death and resurrection like it's a new story about God. The God we meet in Jesus, Mark tells us, is the same God spoken of in the Hebrew Scriptures who's doing what God has always done, but in a new way. A second important point included in the first three verses of Mark makes it clear 
from the first words of his gospel that this is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Mark makes these two important points just prior to launching into the story about the baptism of Jesus because it turns out that baptism works much in the same way. In baptism, we don't stop being who we are or get to ignore the history that shapes us. Just as Jesus didn't stop being Mary's little boy from Bethlehem. When we come to the waters of baptism, we bring all that is with us, all of our humanity, all of our ways, of our families of origin, and the experiences that make us who we are, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Baptism does not change who we are. Baptism marks a turning point in our relationship with the living God made known to us in Jesus Christ and how we are called to live that life. The baptized life is not a career that we can pursue part-time or full-time and retire from someday. Our baptismal promises are not a job description with a list of tasks to accomplish. Baptism calls us to our fullest potential of people made in the image and likeness of God and reminds us who we are and who we are to be and whose we are. Just as God showers us with mercy and grace, we too are called to reflect mercy and grace back out into the world through our thoughts and our deeds and our actions. And Mark's gospel, as we shall see in this year, makes its way through the story in a truly action-packed word. The word immediately appears 42 times in Mark's gospel. The Spirit immediately drove Jesus out into the wilderness. Immediately the disciples followed Jesus. Immediately after Jesus touched the leper, he was healed. Mark is wasting no time telling the people he is talking to about this incredible thing that he has stumbled upon because there is a sense of urgency in their hearing. They don't know if they're going to make it through the next day. Garwood Anderson, the provost of Neshoda House and professor of New Testament, says that Mark's gospel is like this working class guy who comes into a tavern to tell his friends about the most amazing story that he's ever heard in his life. And first he came to the river and then he went out and he healed the lepers and then he went down the street and he, and he, and he confronted the, the Pharisees and then he went on to heal more people and 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 and. and. That's, the, that's the rhythm of Mark's gospel. And that's the way that we should hear it. Because I think in our world there's also a sense of urgency when it comes to being people of the word. Mark's gospel, um, when, when he describes, so we, we're at the baptism of Jesus on the river, and when Jesus is baptized, um, Mark wants us to understand what a cataclysmic event that is. That's why he describes the heavens opening. The words we hear are torn apart, Schismonious is the word in Greek. It shares the same root as schizophrenia. It's like this visceral, violent disruption in the status quo. God's voice disrupts the status quo and declares Jesus to be God's own beloved. If we want life, our life, the life of our community, the life of our society, to remain exactly as it is, if we want to stay doing what we're doing, never change, perhaps we should rethink our attitude towards our own baptism. But if on the other hand we desire a life dedicated to following the teaching of Jesus, and as we work together to build God's kingdom, then the place to start is right back there at that font. Because our baptismal promises aren't, like I said, a checklist of what we're supposed to do. They describe who we are as God's people, who we are as the church. We are a people who value prayer and learning and breaking bread and fellowship. We are a people who value repenting when we fall into sin. We are a people who value the respect and dignity of every person. We are a people who value striving for justice and peace in the world. That is the call of the baptized. 
That is who we are to be. We live in a world that's relatively dark right now. We've just come through this pretty horrific week where we saw our national capital vandalized. We have seen some of our most precious institutions tread upon. And it's easy to lose track of the light when the darkness seems to surround us. But brothers and sisters, we are that light. We are the light of the world. We are who God calls to go out into the world to spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ to a world that so sorely needs to hear it. And if we do live into the kind of people that we are called to be, we will prevail. We will prevail over the darkness. We will prevail over this COVID. We will prevail over all those things that get between us and the potential that God would have us live into. So this week, as we go out into the world, let us think about the promises that were made on our behalf when we were baptized. And let us think about the promises that we made when they were reaffirmed, when we were confirmed and reaffirmed, when we affirm our baptismal covenants, when somebody's baptized or sometimes on Easter. Think about the promises that you made and think about the kind of person that you would be, that you could be, if you lived into every one of those promises and you show that out to the world. Let us stand and profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue to pray this week, as we do every week, for the church around the world. We continue to pray for the mission and ministry of All Saints Cathedral, our staff, the chapter, and the members of the Cathedral Corporation. We pray for our standing committee and for the staff at Nicholson House. We pray for all the parishes of this diocese. This week, we especially hold up in our prayers St. Paul's in Beloit. We continue to pray for our companion diocese of Nuala, and we pray for the people of our covenant partner, the Cathedral of St. John the Evangelist, and their rector, Bishop Jeff Haynes. We continue to pray for Donald, our president, Joe, our president-elect, Tony, our governor, the Congress of the United States and our state legislature, for the courts of justice in this land, and all who make decisions in our name. 
We pray for all seeking God's healing grace, including those on our parish prayer list. Jean, Tim, Dan, Mary, Mary, Walter, Ed, Sydney, James, Henry, Larry, Ruth, Julie, pa, Polly, Bob, Bill, Jim, Isaac and his family, and Melissa. We continue to pray for first responders, including Jake and Nicole, for medical professionals, including Karen and James, and for those working to develop a vaccine and ongoing forms of treatment to combat COVID-19. We continue to pray for all celebrating life milestones this week, for those celebrating birthdays, including Beverly Dupre, Marilyn Schrader, Dan Sylvester, Virginia Cameron, and Larry Diskulski, and for all celebrating anniversaries this week. We pray for all who have died. We pray for the soul of Robert Bradley. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace and rise in glory. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. And let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. Let us pray for our country. O Lord, our governor, bless the leaders of our land, that we may be a people at peace among ourselves and a blessing to other nations of the earth. To the president and members of the cabinet, to governors of states, mayors of cities, and to all in administrative authority, grant wisdom and grace in the exercise of their duties. To senators and representatives, and to those who are make our laws in states, cities, and towns, give courage, wisdom, and foresight to provide for the needs of all our people and to fulfill our obligations in the community of nations. To judges and officers of our courts, give understanding and integrity that human rights may be safeguarded and justice served. And finally, teach our people to rely on your strength and to accept their responsibilities to their fellow citizens that they may elect trustworthy leaders and make wise decisions for the well-being of our society, that we may serve you faithfully in our generation and honor your holy name. We pray through Jesus' name. Amen. And let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you, thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in everlasting. 
And the peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you all. Peace, Lee. Thank you for joining us online this morning or whenever you stream us into your living room or your bedroom or your car or wherever you, wherever you join us from. We're now going to celebrate the Holy Eucharist. And if you are here in the, in the Episcopal Church, all baptized Christians are welcome to receive Holy Communion. And if you are joining us from home, please make your spiritual communion along with us. Walk in love as Christ loves us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. 
joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven. We acclaim you and glorify your name as we say. mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, to the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. <coughs> After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory. And we offer to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may be one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity.
guard its faith and preserve it in peace. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember Robert. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal light and joy. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, martyrs, with Blessed Jackson Kemper, James de Colvin, and all the saints who have founded favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
Let's pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Go into the world in peace, give them courage, hold fast to that which is good. Render unto no one evil for evil. Love the Lord your God, love your neighbor, and love yourself. And the blessing of God on the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day.